Global from SPNN, and we are on our way out to a field in Woodbury to meet Saab Bang, the first Hmong farmer to start selling at the St. Paul Farmer's Market. That was 30 years ago, back in 1983. I'm going to ask him about his farming, but I'm also going to ask him about his journey from Laos, where he escaped the communist forces, to a refugee camp in Thailand, to a farm in Woodbury, Minnesota. Sa! Thank you, thank you. It's nice to Thanks see you. Thanks for coming. Nice to meet yes, you. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so tell me, do you own this field or do you rent? Yeah, I bought this uh, four acre and I rent that corner and I rent other plot over there. I start working this morning uh, five o'clock and I set to market for my wife and I coming back to do field work. Wow. Yes. That's a long day. And I, I won't go to bed until one o'clock tonight. This is a beautiful plot and you grow so many different kinds of vegetables. Oh yes, uh, we go uh, bean, uh, beet, dill, uh, sweet chard, uh, basil, uh, garlic chive, and uh, sage, uh, thyme, any oh. herbs. And we grow uh, green beans, zucchini, uh, asparagus, so, uh, I was a uh, boy farmer, but uh, during the war, I became military uh, personnel, special guerrilla unit, uh, CA foot soldier. So you, so most of your adult life, you were a soldier then. Yes, when uh, we uh, won the Vietnam War in Southeast Asia, and America decided to go home, and we lost our country in 1975. Then we uh, come to Thailand as a refugee and we were sponsored to Wisconsin. I come to Minnesota in 1977. In 1983, uh, after we start Lao family, my Hmong people asked me that, well, is there anything we can use our uh, skill at home? And I say, well, let's try. Hmong know how to farm and you don't need to reading and writing and calculus in order to be a great farmer. You need to have instincts and hard work and all the Hmong had that. The men, the women, the kids could help out. After a few years, I worked for Mayor Norm Pullman's office and I was allowed to go down to Rosemount where the small scale farmers, one acre or half an acre, uh, they sublease the land with Coke refinery, you know, and there's a, a, an American couple who um, get the land ready and the monk come and, and work. Uh, the St. Paul farmer market and Minneapolis farmer market did not want us there. Uh, they said that selling produce to the public have some liability. And we, the monk, uh, probably do not know how to use pesticide, insecticide, and fertilize. And it may cause harm to the public. If you uh, got properly trained, we would allow you to be membership, okay? And then uh, we start a training program by the university. The Hmong members that are growing products at our market today have come such a long way by going, learning methods that the extension offices and the University of Minnesota have taught them through the years to become better growers, growing traditionally with fertilizers and different chemicals to use the, the only the chemicals needed and the fertilizers needed to grow their product. And they also have, have learned more and more every year on how to raise product more effectively using organic methods. So we feel that the Hmong community have really sharpened their skills at the St. Paul Farmers Market for growing locally grown products. There used to be a lot of, of uh, vegetable farming, intensive farming, all around the Twin Cities, but it gradually disappeared in the 50s and 60s. But the soil is great for it. So basically an opportunity was seen for the Hmong to, to help the community and the opportunity to make money in farming could help the Hmong. We train about 120 family. Now I think nearly 400 family are totally self-support by the income of farming. About 50% of all the growers growing products at the farmer's market are from the Hmong community. What were the vegetables that you were missing the most, that you were most excited about growing? <laughs> uh, my wife was pregnant at the time, and she 
uh, want to have a cucumbers, <laughs> and we arrived in this country by the winter time, and cucumber was so expensive. Oh. I asked my sponsor that can we go get cucumber for my wife, and when we reached at the store, and a cucumber cost almost two dollars, so uh, we missed the uh, vegetable like that, but. Uh, Afterward, uh, when we uh, learn in 1983, 84, 85, 86, then we start grow American produce, our produce, so we don't miss anything. <laughs> By providing fresh produce, you know, they promote the uh, healthy eating. You oh, know. and the diversity of the vegetables yeah. that yeah. are now available. Before we don't have that. Now mm -hmm. we have all kinds of things that mm, people don't know what to do with them, you know. <laughs> the second generation of uh, mong growers have really added a huge variety of vegetables to the St. Paul Farmers Market from different Asian vegetables and fruits they've added to our existing uh, variety of products at the St. Paul Farmers Market. The Hmong have an incredible work ethic which they brought here and, and the, the farming is a demonstration of what good things can happen when you work, when you pay attention and when you provide a good or a service for other people. So it's a fantastic success story. And a delicious one. And a yeah. very it's good eating. <laughs> it's not only uh, profitable for the Hmong American grower, but the American public do consume our products, and they are happy. Every day they come to look for their own uh, vendors. By coming to the market and selling their product, it gave all ethnic groups a chance to use their skills to produce a living so that they could send their families to school, get a good education, and get them into the mainstream of the state of Minnesota. And today we have people all over the state working at different corporations that roots came from the rough farmer's market. Woo, well it was a hot one today. Thank you very much for Thank having us much. out at yeah. your farm. Yeah, welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well that's it for this episode of Market. I hope you enjoyed it. I think a nice slice of watermelon would be really good right about now. Or you could try a cucumber. It's like a mini canteen. I'm Emily Noble from the SPNN Series Market, and until next time, eat good food. Stay healthy.